All right, well, good morning, good morning. I found a new curriculum and I am so excited about it, but first, product of the day. Product number one, manners, a manner flashcard of the week. So this today we started with smile and on the back it's got a little information, helpful tips like smiling is the easiest and best way to show kindness. Now it's got, for example, greet people joyfully. It's got look people in the eyes when you speak to them. Now, if your child has Asperger's or autism, I tell them look right there. Just practice looking right at someone's forehead. They can't tell the difference. All right, so that is product number one. Product number two, product number two, three, and four, very quick. They are absolutely my favorite science books. Oh, and five. My favorite, favorite science books. This, honest to goodness, this is part of, I mean, this is just a fantastic book line. Is the moon made of green cheese? Are the clouds made of cotton candy? Are frogs made of green, green slime? No, they are made of atoms. And then it goes into, it introduces some of the atoms to you. So this whole book line, next book, another science book, Human Body Theater. I know I've talked about it before because I love it. Look, it talks about cells. So he's a skeleton and he's putting on a play. And my favorite is when he goes to act two and he's like, I gotta put on my next costume. And he puts on his muscles. Okay, so it goes into cells. I mean, it's just, I just love the way they teach that stuff. So it's by Elemental Science and they're read alouds. So they're read alouds, they got five, different, five or six different books that cover, they're an adventure series, but what they do is each book covers a different area of science. So this one is zoology. So you go to the grasslands, you go to Canada, you learn a lot about because they failed summer school. So as a punishment, they have to go and complete all these missions. And this is hands down, I had to pull it away from my son this morning just so we could eat breakfast. Well, mainly because I didn't want food on it, but it is, I'm telling you, this is the best book. It is the best book that has ever been written ever. Half the book is about water, so you flip it over and the other half is earth. And look at this. So it's got all this, anything that goes under the earth whether it's animals, plants, or all the aluminum, rock salt, uranium, all these things you get. Silver, this is what my son was you know, staring at this morning. So he was like, precious stones, I wanna make these. Oh, I can make the solar panels, but I need silver for that. And that comes from silver ore. So I'm telling you, oh my gosh, it's got, this is the Cola Super Deep Borehole, which is, I mean, it tells you how thick the core is, and this is the furthest they've ever gone down. It's abandoned now, but it's seven and a half miles is the farthest they've gone down. And they got samples from there and things like that. So I'm telling you, it just, I just, I love it. And here is the water part, everything that goes under the water as well, man-made or I say God-made, animal-made, God-made. We are gonna go through an actual lesson for from Mr. Q's and then from building blocks, okay? What they have in common is they are both written by a human. It's not, a, I mean, every curriculum is, I'm sure, at some point, but it's not a huge company. Now this is, so let's do lesson one. Neither one of these curriculums have busy work, which is why I like them. So this was my favorite curriculum until I saw Mr. Q's and now I don't know. I've decided I think I'm gonna do both because there's no reason not to do both in my opinion. And I'll show you why, I'll show you all that. So. Now notice that the table of contents as to what this covers, it's gonna cover chemistry, biology, physics, geology, and astronomy. So does Mr. Q's as well. Again, I love this book because it breaks it down so simply. So what is chemistry? But before we get to that, we'll just do lesson one. So lesson one talks about the introduction of science. So ask questions, do experiments, compare results, and then debate your results or argue about sometimes with other scientists. So it talks about the history of science. Neither one of these has busy work, which is what I like. So it talks about the scientific method and then we're gonna put it into practice, okay? So that's what we're talking about, the hypothesis, an experiment collecting results. That's what we're doing. We're asking questions and we're collecting results and we're comparing results. Okay, so this was chapter one, all right. You can begin this, both of them you begin when you feel your child is ready, right? Now look at this. These are the materials at a glance. They are the same materials. I'm gonna show you on the screen, also the materialist for Mr. Q. So they are actually, they're amazing in the sense that both curriculums, this was written by a homeschool mom, Mr. Q's a high school teacher, are dealing with 
actual things that you actually have in your house. Not like sunlights, not like um, book sharks where it's some obscure stuff you need to track down. Even with the, the box, you can buy the box for sunlight and for book shark and it's $79. $79 gets you one box. Um, so, you know, full of obscure parts because tracking down some of those parts on your own, it's just not easy. So experiment number one, I like how it's laid out. It could not be easier. Materials needed now. Okay, so these are the materials needed. Color pencils, nice guy, living thing to observe. So it's just walking it through very simply and you're gonna, your children all get the laboratory notebook doing science. So here we are, this is the children's notebook. What I might see in the night sky, they can draw that, right? They can write words. In science, it's important to do experiments and to write everything down. A laboratory notebook is the place where scientists record what they think, what they observe, and what they discover. Simply put, a laboratory notebook is the place where scientists write down everything they do. This laboratory notebook will be used for all exploring and building blocks of science. Book one, the experiments. It is the place where you write down what you learn. Then you'll have all the information in one place that you can refer to it later. So we got five sections here. The think about it section, the observe it, the what did you discover section, the why, and then the just for fun. So that's what we got from this curriculum. You know, I honestly thought that I was going to leave science, teaching my kids science to my husband. That's why I honestly thought, like that, that I would teach, you know, the English and the writing and all that stuff and the art. And he would teach the science and the chemistry and maybe the complicated mathematics, right? And that, you know, and I get it. He, you know, he's a genius level, so that's fine. That's fine to assume that. And I'm not discounting my part because every genius needs someone in their house who's like, I love your ideas. I love your plans. Where's your pants? We gotta go. Okay, so let's take a look at Mr. Q's awesome curriculum. Okay, so what we're doing here is I am on his website. So he has life science, earth science, chemistry, and physical science, but he also has all these advanced ones as well. Now these are elementary age, ages six to nine. They're just awesome. And you get the life science one for free. So let's click on the life science. Oh, there you go. Now I'm on Mr. Q's website. Don't be tricked. Don't be tricked. Okay, the classic science curriculum. So it is non-religious, which I do not mind. I don't mind when something's non-religious. I just have the problem when it insults you because you're religious, that I don't care for. <laughs> okay, so let's go down here. We're doing living and non-living things is this chapter's focus. All right, so this is Mr. Q's curriculum. This is the classic science, this is basically, as far as I'm concerned, everything you need to know in elementary. So it's down to 36 weeks, you can do it between ages six to nine. I would recommend, I think for my kids, grade three would be perfect to start this, just so they can retain most of the information. Now this is just, and I'll show you why when you go through it. So this is, this is of course, you can't give this away for free, although they can go to the website and get it for free, and things like that. Oops, let's see what he covers. So under this is basic needs and resources, biomes, life, life cycles, classification, food webs, senses, body organs, cells, and health and nutrition. Okay, now look at his, look at the, this is the materials list. So chapter one, one shoe box, handful of rocks, fruits, vegetables, metal objects like screws, bolts, handful of leaves, newspapers and magazines, scissors, pen, pencil, glue, paper. You can get all this stuff. I looked through everything and even, mostly everything, and even what I like is the eyedropper, chapter four, eyedropper or drinking straw. Uh, yeah, because I don't have an eyedropper. I am Conus. Um, no, Oconus. I'm Conus or Oconus. I am one of them. And so I, to find a dropper, yeah, no thanks, packs. It would take a while. So, but all of his thing, the hardest thing is the Knox gelatin, quite frankly. That would be, if I were to, uh, that would be the hardest. And fishing line I, I can still find. So even if it has something complicated, quote unquote complicated, it doesn't have a ton of it. So whereas I've showed you the other science curriculums, the book shark and the sunlight, their materials lists are complicated, in my opinion. Now ESP, so he talks about ESP, he explains it. Sorry, I went too fast. Exploring scientific procedures. This is teaching you you get a full-on education as a parent on how to do stuff. He's teaching you what an independent variable is, what a dependent variable is, 
and questions, hypotheses, data tables, and graphs. He's teaching you how to graph something, how to create a table. I mean, stuff like this, which is, I think, so these, this formula is what you're gonna be using throughout all of the program. So you need to know how to do this and he's teaching you how to do it. So I think that's amazing. And so there's about 20 pages in this, I think, no, I'm on page 20. I don't know, 40 pages. There's about 40 pages so phrases to use, I mean, it's very, I love that he te he doesn't take for granted that I don't know what the heck he's talking about. Like he doesn't, he explains it all, okay? Sources of error, I mean, we go through it all. So I think it's definitely a solid, solid curriculum. I mean, it's everything you need to know in order to hit high school and be confident in high school. So, and it's a shorter, it's almost, I, I wanna say there's definitely no busy work in here, okay? Because other curriculums, that start at kindergarten and go all the way up, there's a lot of busy work. The exception is, I call it my favorite curriculum, but it's really, I mean, tied to this, to be honest, I'm gonna do both. I'm gonna do both because I don't see why not. I, I don't see why not. Um, I wouldn't do them at the same time, but just because I wanna give them a really strong science foundation and I'm, I am not, so don't let it intimidate if you don't know. Look at this, he's got the definitions. Thank you because I need to know that biotic, all living or deceased organisms are biotic objects. I did not know that. I didn't know that. Answers to worksheet questions. So it's, I mean, everything you need to go over and to properly teach and instruct, dun, 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 graphing life, all this information, really good. Okay, so let's go over to, let's go back, going back. Now let's go to the student copy, five chapters. Do, 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 living and non-living things. Let's take a look. I don't know if I took a look at this yet. I thought I did, but maybe not. So what I love is it's the same writing as also my favorite curriculum. Now both curriculums condense, the difference is the other curriculum takes, takes college concepts and later on in fourth and fifth grade puts them into the homeschool curriculum, okay? The other curriculum does. But this one also has advanced chemistry, advanced, so it also does it as well. So both of them, I think, are, you know, very sufficient curriculums. I think they're fabulous. Okay, and I love, yeah, I did read this. I like how it's, I don't know, they're talking to kids. The only thing that would make this even better is if Mr. Q had a YouTube channel and he had a video for every one of these units so that the kids could also watch it because uh, if he talked like he wrote, I think it would be very entertaining. But I mean, he's busy. <laughs> he's a high school teacher. He's got stuff to do. What makes organisms different? Ooh, I love hamburgers. Hold the onions. I don't think that's funny. Okay, so both plants and animals need air, water, and food to stay alive. That is the one thing that makes us alike. What is different is how we get the air, water, and food into our bodies. So both of them are teaching at, in my opinion, the right level. They're talking to kids in language kids understand. So now this is why I would wait till third grade because what I love is he does do some, I don't know if you call them testing, but you know, he challenges you in a simple way to know, okay, what's population? What number is population? A group of similar, similar organisms living in the same area. Now, I had trouble doing this when I did this before I read the teacher's manual, I was like, I don't know, and I had to go back through this, because if you don't know, you just go back and look, they're hot. the words are highlighted. <laughs> so don't worry, if someone doesn't know it, you can go back. But again, that's why I said third grade, because you start this, so there's not a ton, there's not a ton of work in every unit, but you're learning a ton of concepts, right? Which one is right? Circle the correct answer. So it has it a different way. All right, biotic and abiotic. So that is it for lesson one. And I mean, it teaches you a lot and it doesn't waste your time. Is everything a living organism? To be alive, you must. So I just think it's, and it's free. Quite a great curriculum. And I'm going to, per, I plan to purchase his other curriculums for, that he has available. Let's go take a quick look at those. And I believe they are $60 each. So he's got, Okay, so we've got Earth science, which is space, weather, earthquake, volcano. So he just puts Earth science, he puts astronomy under there. And then chemistry. And what he recommends too is abstract con concepts like physical science be taught later. So this is the physical science. So you could start with like the life science and maybe go through 
the list like this, but then he has also has these you could do after as well. So both curriculums are solid, are winners, are A pluses. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. It's tough to decide like which curriculum do I go with? And remember, I have reviewed almost every curriculum there is. I mean, any curriculum I have sat down and looked through it and decided too wordy, too busy, <laughs> just a waste, of, some of it is a waste of time and I don't like that. My kids have a lot of living to do. I have a lot of living to do, people, so that we can do and enjoy other projects that we're doing, right? And if they wanna learn more faster, then yeah, absolutely. And a big part of any science curriculum, in my opinion, especially with little kids, is books. Books, 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 books. There's a million different books, a million different picture books that discuss things. One of my favorite science picture books is called Ice Boy, and it's about a little ice cube and his journey from the different stages. Is it stages? Here we go again. The different, whatever he is, phases, stages, that he goes through as an ice cube to water, back up to the clouds, and how he lives his life. So just reading books with your kids, you all know you can, you can learn so much, especially in their younger years. And when kids are really little in kindergarten, walking out in nature, I don't care for nature, but walking, but everyone else, all the normal people in the world can walk out in nature and, uh, and discuss it and talk about it. So it's, can you say please like and subscribe? Please like and subscribe. And hit the bell for notifications. The bell, you know, that they didn't. <laughs> <laughs>